Hello and welcome to this, our second video looking at Google Plus Hangouts on Air. My name is Stephen Pritchard and I'm the editor of Audio Video Pro. In case you missed it, our first video, which was recorded as a Hangout on Air, covered the basics of the technology and some of the key controls, as well as some of the ways that you can use Hangouts on Air in your organization. In this, our second part of the series, we're going to look at creating a multi-camera video, and then next month we'll look at how to bring in remote contributors, which is one of the special features of Hangout on Air, and then we'll round off with a fourth part, which will look at audience and social media interaction. So in our first part, we'll look at setting up a multi-camera shoot and controlling it from within the Hangout on Air itself. And in the second, we'll look at the pros and cons of using a professional vision mixing setup to push out the picture from different cameras to the Hangout. We'll put links to both clips in the article on Audio Video Pro, which we're publishing in the next couple of days. Now, though, looking at the technology, the neat thing about Hangouts on Air is that they stream live, and they also record to YouTube at the same time. But as we saw in our last episode, there's a world of difference between the results from a professional camera, a webcam, and a built-in camera in your laptop when it comes to streaming a Hangout. So a professional broadcast camera will always give the best results, but it's by no means the only option. Now, we've set up three cameras here, all different. They're all pointing at me, which maybe is not the most exciting shot ever, but that'll do for now. At the moment, though, you're only seeing one camera angle, which is our pro camera. If I go into the Hangout on my computer, though, and plug in a second camera, I could change that for you. So let me just do that, because there's a few buttons that I have to press on the screen here. But if I just switch over to that very briefly so you can get the idea of, uh, of what we're doing, you'll see that we've actually switched the main feed to the uh, wide angle on that camera there. So the two other cameras here are connected up to laptops, the one I'm using for the Hangout here, and then the second one for the consumer camcorder. So you can see I've got a microphone there, and um, actually if I move my laptop, you can see this the laptop is in front of me. That is streaming directly into this one. And then over the other side of the room, we've got a second laptop which is connected to a second um, streaming encoder there and that is allowing us to have the two camera angles so our consumer camera is actually connected up to a separate laptop now the way this works then is you can have 10 active seats on a hangout so potentially 10 guests or 10 cameras now both those cameras are running HDMI through the Blackmagic encoders here we've got the intensity extreme for the pro camera and uh, the cheaper intensity shuttle for the consumer camera there's no reason not to use the intensity shuttle for both uh, one of the reasons we've bought one of each here is because one is USB 3 and one is fire, uh, Thunderbolt, sorry, not Firewire. That means that potentially you could connect up a USB 3 and a Thunderbolt device at the same time if your, cam if your computer is capable of supporting that, uh, which some of the higher-end Macs certainly are. The benefits of using an iPhone, though, or another smartphone or tablet is it does cut out a couple of steps, the computer and the encoder. So it's a shame we'd not actually be able to bring that into the Hangout uh, right now for you. Of course, the quality won't be as good because the camera on these things does have a limitation and the cellular connection or the Wi-Fi connection is also a limitation versus Ethernet. We're using hardwired Ethernet for the other two computers here. But of course, it does mean that you'd be able to join a Hangout from a remote location rather than just from a studio. So in that respect, it's a very useful fallback. And might open up some possibilities, for example, for reporting from the field or from live events, and that's something that we'll look at in a future program. Just to mention, though, before we move on, of uh, audio, in preparing these sessions, um, something that we've found is that um, you can probably just see the microphone in the corner actually there. I don't know if you can zoom um, out of it just to show the microphone, but one of the things that we've uh, noticed is that you do have to be quite careful if you're using several devices in one room, uh, how you set up the sound. Um, if you've just one camera that you're running in the Hangout, uh, or a webcam, for example, then it's pretty simple. Your audio will be coming from whatever is coming from the camera, uh, or you could, of course, choose one of the audio inputs on your computer. But if you're going to switch between cameras, especially as they're in the same room as we're doing for this demonstration here, then that can throw up a few issues, and it really does complicate things, and it can really ruin the audio quality. What we've found that works best is to have a single audio source and to stick with that throughout the Hangout. So here here, although we do have the professional microphone inputs on our cameras, we're running our sound through a separate audio interface. Uh, this one is made by Avid. Now, if I just switch over to the um, consumer camera, which is on the wide angle, uh, and I could probably just actually um, bring that up to the camera there and hold that up there. I won't move it too far because obviously you'll lose the sound, but this is a um, M-Audio interface, which was a brand that until fairly recently was owned by Avid. You can still buy this unit, uh, Avid branded, and it just has one microphone input, one headphone 
output which I'm using for my earpiece here and adjustable levels there. So for example, if I want to increase my monitoring levels uh, for hearing questions, for example, from um, someone else on, a, on the Hangout, then I could do that using that there. It's a very, very simple USB 1 XLR input. The key thing is it has one XLR input which can deliver uh, phantom power and again if you uh, if you look on the front of this the little red uh, red dot there is indicating that this is supplying power to my microphone and if it wasn't doing that you wouldn't get any sound at all so if I just switch back to the um, the main camera again the audio will be consistent regardless of which camera you're using and it avoids some of the problems of getting an echo or audio feedback and it also means that if for example you do have a consumer camera such as the Sony there that doesn't have an XLR input it's a fairly cheap thing I think these boxes are about 50 or 60 pounds about the same in US dollars and that gives you a professional XLR input for your microphone you then don't have to worry too much about what inputs you have on your camera you could even use a webcam for your video feed and use the professional audio input to um, hook up a better microphone such as the uh, one we've got here which is our, I will I will move this sorry this will make a bit of noise but uh, if I move this into shot um, this is a short shotgun microphone it's called a Rode NTG1 um, that's sort of entry level professional microphone and it's about 120 pound 150 160 uh, US dollars I just put that down very carefully so it doesn't um, hurt your ears if you're listening on headphones. But why go to all that trouble then? Why set up all, all these different cameras? The answer is that more cameras make for a more interesting program and Hangouts on Air let you switch between cameras from the computer. So we've demonstrated that a little bit as we go along but just in the same way as you can switch between participants you can actually switch between cameras. So for example uh, at the moment with the film strip on the bottom uh, you can probably see on the live broadcast uh, who is actually in the session but if I turn that off which say counterintuitively it says broadcast the large video that I see to the audience and hide the other feeds is what it says on Google Plus um, so it's slightly um, slightly counterintuitive perhaps if I if I click on that and then um, close off the cameraman window that should actually go away from the screen there let me just double check that that has done that and then um, I can switch between them I can switch angles I can switch to my consumer camera which is say set up on a wide angle um, and then I can switch back to my main camera angle and I can do as many cuts as I have cameras which is limited only by the number of participants very similar to the way that you would use a professional vision mixer so once again if I cut between the cameras there I can cut to the consumer camera which is set up on a separate laptop here and then I can cut back to my camera so if we then zoom in a bit on that camera I will give you a better idea of the contrast between the different camera angles and I say maybe not so necessary for just one person talking but if you had a couple of people in the studio if you had a, a guest for example you wanted to switch from a wide shot with two people to a uh, shot with just uh, the presenter for example like this shot here then that would be the ideal way to do that and again as I said you can control that for example if I was working on my own uh, rather than having a colleague here to help I could actually control that camera with a remote control if it supported it there's even now a couple of apps that you can get on um, for example on the iPad now you can get apps to control the the professional camera we have here and that includes being able to set the focus point at the zoom and the aperture and so forth so that actually would allow me to do that live on air if I needed to there is though a downside to this approach apart from the fact that I said it's a little bit fiddly to do and the downside really is that you're taking up those seats on the hangout with the different devices so potentially three cameras is um, three seats on the hangout if you have an additional producer there someone controlling the hangout that would be four seats even if they're not using a camera you can get around that to some extent now one way you can get around that is for example if I switch from the um, pro camera here what I'll do is firstly I'll switch to the um, second seat in the hangout so just going through this step by step what you're seeing now is the professional camera the Sony uh, PMW 200 in fact that's the image that you're looking at at the moment that's the main camera for this hangout that is connected to my device here I'll switch to the wide angle camera which is the semi pro camera on the uh, the wide shot of the studio we'll just leave that where it is for the moment what I'm going to do then is I'm going to switch my internal camera settings away from the encoder that I'm using and I'm going to switch to the built-in webcam on my uh, camera here now as is often the case these webcam images are not particularly flattering but if I just try to line that up a little bit again this shows the advantage of using a separate audio source I haven't touched my audio input that is still my M audio box but if I switch over to there you'll see that I am now using the um, Apple FaceTime camera that's built into my laptop uh, it's not bad it's not quite as good as what we were looking at before and if I switch back to the wide angle camera for a moment I can then readjust my settings and change from the FaceTime HD camera back to my black magic box which is streaming and as I said you can have um, one or two interfaces potentially per hangout 
pointed up, there is also a, a little device that um, lets you split um, between a couple of cameras if you wanted to over, uh, I think, over USB 3. Um, but with Thunderbolt, for example, you could have two Thunderbolt interfaces or even, as they're now coming into the market, two Thunderbolt connected cameras. So that's the basics of setting up a multi-camera shoot on a Hangout on Air. So a couple of things that we've uh, learned during this session, hopefully, is that um, you can do it. It does work. You do need to plan the settings of it. If you want to have lots of cameras, you will need lots of seats. That's the pluses. It's uh, definitely worth separating out the audio so you can control that on its own device and don't have any problems as you switch between cameras, for example, accidentally switching to a camera that is broadcasting the sound live. So that's some of the things that we've learned. But there are a few disadvantages to this. One is the amount of computing resource you need. For each seat, unless you're using so with each camera, which is taking up a seat in the Hangout, unless you are using a, an iOS device or an Android tablet device, you are going to be using a computer, which is an expensive piece of kit and fairly bulky to carry around. That's one problem. The other problem is that each of those cameras is using bandwidth the whole time that you're streaming. And that can be expensive if you're not on an unlimited plan, be very expensive if you're using 4G wireless, for example. But the main problem is you may simply not have enough bandwidth to be able to stream from all your cameras simultaneously, even though the viewer is only watching one camera at a time. So that's why in part two of this, we'll look at how to do this with a vision mixer. And the advantage of using a vision mixer is that although you can have as many cameras as you like, or as many cameras as your vision mixer can support, you're only sending one stream up to the Hangout on air. That will save you bandwidth. It may increase reliability. And it certainly is something that's worth investigating if you're setting up a studio, because a basic vision mixing equipment is not particularly expensive. So I hope that's have been of some use to everyone. Um, again, uh, these things are done live, so there's always a little bit that uh, you know goes wrong on the day or needs to be tweaked. But for more on this, uh, for more on how to set up a Hangout on Air, please do check out our article on uh, the Features section on Audio Video Pro. That's www.audiovideopro.net. We'll be back with the second part of this in perhaps a, a week or two's time, looking at how to do this through a vision mixer, cutting out the multiple seats in the Hangout part of it. And then we'll come back and look at the social media, remote guests, and the interactive parts of Hangouts On Air. My name is Stephen Pritchard, and thank you very much for watching.